Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well in these trying times and that you're staying safe. This podcast is an interview with Nicky Run from Unstrung Customs. He's a friend of mine, he lives in Marbella. He strings for Novak when he's in Spain. He hits with some really good players on the tour and he paints and customizes rackets together with two other guys that also work in Unstrung Customs. They have created a unique 3D palette system for players looking for a custom grip shape and size. And uh, now he's going to launch a stringing course online for players who are looking into becoming better stringers. So uh, he's a busy guy who knows a lot about tennis, stringing and all that interesting stuff for us tennis nerds. I hope you like this Skype call. There might be some sound issues because uh, Skype might not always work perfectly. But I hope you enjoy it anyway. Have a nice day, stay safe and take care. How are you coping in, in these difficult times and how is it compared to your daily life otherwise? You're a stringer, you customize, you paint, you coach. How has life changed in the recent weeks? Yes, obviously, I mean, we've had to, uh, I've had to make some adjustments um, considering everything, but um, I'm doing all right, we're doing good. Uh, obviously not stringing or playing, unfortunately. Um, but, um, you know, it gives, gives, it gives us time to kind of assess what we're up to. Uh, I mean, I've been able to do some customizing, you know, so I've been able to prepare rackets for, for some players for, you know, when, when all this passes. Um, and, um, yeah, it's just been keeping busy. Um, I've been lucky enough that, that uh, Novak Djokovic is here, so I've been able to string some rackets for him. Um, and, and that's it, really, just you know, trying to stay home, stay, stay safe, and, uh, and just get on with a few things at home. How long have quarantine been ongoing for there in, in Marbella, in Spain? So far, we've had three weeks of quarantine. We've, we've got another three weeks um, planned, so hopefully it doesn't go any further than that, because you know, six weeks indoors is, is a long time. Yeah, you have to think of mental health and business stuff and like the economy and, and, and a lot of other things you have to take into consideration as well, I guess, when you do these lockdowns. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I'm fortunate enough that, you know, as of so far I've been okay with regards to, you know, personal finances and been able to, you know, work from home, like get on with a few things myself. But, you know, there are a lot of people that haven't, haven't been as lucky or have been, you know, in a lot more difficult situations. So, yeah, I think some... You know, some fresh air and some activity as well that does does people good. Yeah, we all miss tennis for sure. I mean, that's that's why I'm going a bit yeah, crazy definitely. when I can't play. You know. Yeah, even I mean, even the, some of the pros, you know, they some of them don't, you know, aren't, aren't practicing. Some of them, you know, they they're just sitting against the wall. They're just, you know staying fit indoors. Um, so it's you know, it doesn't matter who who you are or what you do. Like it's it's something that's affected everyone. Yeah, you need to have a private court and someone within your family to play with. Uh, that's quite exactly. rare. You know? So how and when did you move to Marbella? How long have you been living there? I've been here 12 years. Um, yeah, it'll be 12 years this summer, um, which is, yeah, it's a long time. It goes, time goes fast, but um, life's good here, especially for tennis. You know, obviously we have great weather all year round, uh, courts, everything. Um, so yeah, so it's been, been good. 12 years goes fast. So in your daily life, you're running Unstrong Customs? Yes, we have, uh, we have three members, uh, myself, um, and then um, two colleagues I have in, in the UK in London, uh, Fran and Darren. Um, and then together we yeah we run the company on Strong Customs. Everyone can check you out on Instagram and and, um, mm-hmm. and see all the the cool work you do. You do a lot of racket painting and customization for the pros as well as stringing. Um, what would you say you do most of those things? Is it like the painting part or is it the stringing? Uh, yeah, we do, I mean, we do a, a combination of the three, obviously, uh, at the moment, or lately, I've been, we've been doing a lot of racket painting, which is cool, because I think we're kind of one of the few guys out there in the world that do it, um, so we've been doing a lot of racket painting, um, yeah, and then obviously we do, we, we string, we string for some pro, pro players, we customise for, for both, you know, um, club players and pro players. Yeah, it's been going alright, we've been running now, I think, four and a half years, five years nearly, and, uh, and things are moving quite, quite nicely. I, I saw your recent video when you were uh, stringing Novak's rackets. How long have you been stringing for uh, for him when he's not uh, on tour? Yeah, so um, I mean, well, obviously when he's on tour, he's with uh, he's with P1, and then when he's down in Spain, he comes down here to um, to train sometimes. Um, obviously because of the weather and stuff, he comes down. Uh, so I've been stringing his rackets uh, probably for about three or four years now. Whenever he's here, which is you know, which is always cool. It's, you know, 
nice to mix it up a little bit. You've been practicing with him once or twice before. Yeah, yeah, I practice with him sometimes. Um, yeah, whenever he needs, basically. I mean, there are a couple of guys here as well that, that are still playing, so whenever they're here, they'll practice with him. But um, yeah, I still practice with him time to time, which is fun. Obviously, it uh, yeah, that gets the body body going properly. And also, I mean, you've been um, recently. You took part in us in us stringing team like a professional stringing team what was the tournament in hamburg how, how was that as an experience yeah last summer i was in um uh, i was part of the head stringing team for for the hamburg open uh which used to be obviously used to be a masters event um uh, that was cool it was fun it was the first time i'd been a, um, a tournament stringer officially in the sense of like with a with the official on-site team obviously i've done quite a few tournaments um but just let's say privately with you know with the players that we've been looking after so that was the first time that that we that i've been part of the team it was it was really fun it was something I mean, it was tough really tough um but we had a really really good team probably probably i mean we had probably maybe four or five of the best stringers um in the world there so we had like a really really great team um and um yeah we had we had fun even though i mean the days are long like the stringers they don't get half as much uh, credit as they as they deserve um, because I mean the the hours the days it's really it's it's hard work um, we you know we'd when um, when we started obviously the first few days were kind of slow because you know we start we're there before just like two days before qualies start <clears throat> and then obviously the qualies guys come in um, and then like over the weekend. You still have obviously the qualies players, and then the main draw players are all coming in, and they're kind of preparing and they're practicing. So like Saturday, Sunday, Monday um, of the first week was just it was crazy. We'd be starting. I think the earliest we started was we got there at quarter past seven, um, and I think we left at about half past nine. Oh. Um, yeah, so it was a long, long day because uh, we have to stay. Um, till at least half like kind of like half an hour after the last match finishes and obviously because Hamburg is A on clay and B they have lights and stuff so they have really a long a long day schedule um, you know so a couple matches went too long da 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 and so they finished at like around 10 to 9 something like that and then we have to kind of wait around um, to see obviously for for, uh, for the stadium to, to, to kind of fill out and then obviously if players are going to drop us rackets and stuff um, so yeah it was a long day and we were at we're actually we're out we're on site like outside like in a booth with um, next to kind of like uh, the sh- like food and the shopping and stuff so like we had a lot of people come around they can you know kind of get a little bit close to the to the records and stuff which is fun but obviously you have so much movement so many people around all the time so it was it was long days you know it was like 12 to 14 15 hours on your feet stringing um, so it was yeah it was an experience it was fun I mean I <clears throat> It was, it's not something that personally I would want to do all the time, but but with the kind of, we had a yeah we had a really fun team um, set up by uh, by Dennis Fabian from um, from Head. Uh, he put a really nice uh, really nice team together, so that was fun. And I, like I would do that again or something similar again. Um, but yeah, I mean these guys, the guys that do it week in week out, they they deserve more credit than they than they get. Yeah, it's very impressive, and it takes a toll on your body as well, I guess. I mean, what, how does your fingers and back feel after a full day of stringing? Yeah, I mean, actually, the first day is fine, to be honest, but then when you get into day two, day three, and because, I mean, I, I string regularly, but I don't string, you know, like, tournament quantities every day, you know, no. so, like, even though I'm, you know, I'm, I can string, I don't know, if, like, some days I'll string two records in a day, some, I'll, some days I'll string ten, but, like, it's not you know, relentless, whereas that day I think I was averaging like 18 to 22 records a day. And so my fingers were, yeah, they were in pieces. By like day three, I was, you just, you just keep going because if you stop it, it hurts. It really, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. And then, you know, you kind of, every kind of little half break you get, you need to sit down for a bit. Um, because, for example, the way the stringing room works is that at the beginning of the week, you kind of get rackets from players. So, for example, say day one, uh, you happen to start stringing, I don't know, uh, Fogbini's rackets, you know, then you're going to string his rackets the whole tournament. And so, like, so the, so the stringers, they try, you know, that we try and, like, break up the players. So we look at the draw, for example. Uh, we see, okay, who's in the top half, who's in the bottom half, like, who... So you don't have too many players that might play each other, for example, because then you could be stuck stringing, you know, like, 10 rackets for one match or whatever. Or um, So, but, you know, you can get lucky slash unlucky that all your players win 
and then you keep stringing the same amount every day. Uh, whereas another stringer might have, you know, all their players lose or a few of their players lose, so they're only left with like one or two players. So they'll be doing like obviously some of the other rackets that come in, uh, but they're kind of like the mass load won't be as as much. So you know, so you so you you could be stringing like for three and a half hours in a row. And, and um, and one of the other guys has just done a couple of rackets because that's just that's just kind of how it goes. But then you help each other out, um, you know, because because obviously the, the the quality of the stringing is all like super high. So in theory, whoever strings a racket, it comes out the same. But obviously, just to keep things as accurate and as consistent as possible, we try and always keep the same stringers stringing the same players' rackets the whole time. Yeah, I can imagine that. It must require some. Um some organization skills to just keep that going and, and working smoothly. Um, what's, uh, what's the kind of um, rackets you get? Is it, is it kind of everything or is it a little tight patterns in a small hair head size that requires more time to string? Um, we get a bit of everything, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the rackets are, I would say the majority of the rackets aren't, they're not small heads, but they, you know, they'll be 98. Uh, but a lot of them will be 18-20 string pattern um, and you'll see a lot of the guys especially for Hamburg playing on clay they'll be using you know full poly, full poly setups yeah. Um, so yeah I mean I can't remember whose racket it was it was a doubles player I was stringing um, the well some ultra tour so it's like a, it's a 90 what was that 93 head um, 97 and, right uh, the ultra tour yeah I think it's 97 it's the Ah, okay, okay, yeah, 97 head, but then it has the 1820. Um, yeah, it's tight pattern, yeah. Super tight string pattern, and I was stringing, and it was like, I think it was, uh, it was either a diadem string, or it was Selinko Torbite rough, or diamond rough, something like that, and it was like 27 kilos with pre-stretch. Ooh. So it was, it was horrible, like it was the worst, the worst racket I've ever strung, it was like, it was such hard work. Because I mean, if the strings didn't move, if you pulled the strings through the racket too fast, it you know you would notch the strings. So it was, and because of the pre-stretch, you had pre-stretch on mains and crosses. Every time you tension the the string, you had to wait for it to go and come back uh, to the desired uh, tension. So it was, it was, yeah, that was really that was brutal. Yeah, that sounds tough. Was was there any other like interesting requirements you get? I mean, how picky are players, or do you have any? Like weirdly low or high tensions you get? Yeah, there's always a super, there's always a big range. I uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, I think it was Basilash Billy that won the tournament. I think he was playing super low, if I'm not mistaken. I think he uses he was using Hawk all over, and he was playing. Don't quote me on this, but I think it was you know like in the really like 18 kilo range, oh, wow. something like that. So yeah, I think so. And then you have guys that you know that are playing like yes, you know, 27, 28, 29 kilos. Um, so it really, there's there's uh, it was a really high range. And then pick, like pickiness wise, there I mean there are a few guys that are, that are tricky. But in general, most of the guys are nice. You know, like they appreciate what we do. And they, I mean, you know, obviously as long as the, at the end of the day, as long as the standard is right, like you know, they ask for a certain thing, we give them to them. You know, they're going to be nice. But there are a few guys that that um, that. Yeah, they just they like to you know make trouble basically. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just I can be understand. a bit, bit, bit over picky and um, and and actually strangely enough, the, it's actually the doubles players that are more picky than the singles players for some reason. Um, I don't know why that is, but um, yeah, ah, that's just, weird. Yeah, I guess maybe because of the. Um, I mean, do you would you need more precision from the from being always at the net? Yeah, I don't know to be honest, actually. Uh, but you know, like the doubles players are more likely to have. Two rackets at this tension, two rackets at that tension, one at this tension for warm up. This, you know, whereas like a lot of the singles players, or even you know, even some of the top cards will be like, just I want three, three, whatever. Let's say that their regular tension is on a twenty-five kilos. They'll be like, can I get three at twenty-five, and then I'll take three at twenty-five and a half because it's a bit sunny. So in case it, you know the ball's flying too much or whatever. Whereas like, yeah, some of the doubles guys, they they're really, you know, I mean, I get as well. Doubles is really as well like a sport of a lot of super fine tactics um, and margins for error and analysis so so I guess yeah I guess maybe as well that you know it's part of what comes with the with the sport how, how is it to string for Novak is he easy to deal with when it comes to his rackets no yeah to be honest he's fine he's great um, the only thing he does that he, li- that he likes to do is like 
drop you the rackets a bit late sometimes in like oh here's a couple of rackets can i get them for tomorrow morning and you're like well you could have told me this this morning but yeah sure but otherwise he's fine to be honest he's easy, easy. i mean as, again as, at the end of the day if you you know if you string the rackets well you know then he's got nothing to complain about at the end of the day you know it's not like i mean he's not asking for anything super crazy he's not i mean i've not had any issues at all with him actually i've not had any problems he's, he's not come back and blamed me for a bad practice yet so that's good give me a racket i'll uh, i'll string it stencil it and then put, put a new grip on it and then if it's if the weather's good then i won't bother putting it in a bag just to try and save save the plastic or try and try and reuse some of the bags you know just to i mean the to be honest, for, I mean, especially for, for training, the only reason I'd use the bag is just to keep the grips clean. You know, it's not uh, only if, it, if I see that it might be raining or I need to, you know, or it's like drizzling and they take the rackets outside, then I'll put them in a bag. So see, so the strings don't get wet, but otherwise try and avoid the bags as much as possible at the moment. And yeah, he's, yeah, he's always like, he's always quite easy. He's chilled, you know, I mean, he's and also because I mean, for practice as well, it's different to tournaments, you know, so like as well, even if he changes his plan and then I'm like there's no way I can string I can get them done for you in time he's like okay don't worry like he has other rackets you know it's not like he's going into a match or these are the the two rackets I'm stringing for him are the only two rackets he has you know he still has another two in his bag from the last practice or whatever so so no it's he's, he's easy he's nice he's friendly I mean he's straightforward Cool, but how long have you been stringing in, in total? I mean, you were um, you were playing as a pro. Um, how how long time ago? I mean, I learned to string when I was around 14, 15, um, was when I learned to string, uh, and then, uh, then I've been stringing ever since. Like I've always been interested in stringing and customizing and messing around with rackets and you know everything. Um, so um, I yeah, I kept that up. I mean, I was playing until I was about. I stopped kind of around 23, more or less, 24, something like that. So about, I'm 29 now, so about five years ago, five, six years ago. Um, and then like, because I've been stringing, I've been stringing for friends, you know, for uh, like it helped you as well, like obviously to pay for some of the tennis and stuff. So uh, then I kind of, as I was stopping, I kind of started, started on Strong Customs. It started off just kind of like it was an idea for myself. Uh, and then I kind of put my two friends in kind of in contact and we and together we kind of started um, I came up with the brand name and stuff and we, and we created the, the brand on Strong Customs and then um, the idea was actually just to kind of be a stringer and customizers you know like similar I don't know, to P1 and Ringroll and these guys um, but then I was finishing playing and so I didn't have a contract or anything left so I painted my rackets black um, and um, and put them on Instagram I just for fun and then people were like going crazy about them so we start i was like oh cool okay people asking about it so then like took about six months or so to like really kind of like i had to do a lot of testing practice yeah to then kind of we started painting rackets kind of semi by accident uh really so yeah now it's probably the 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 thing we do the most of um because we kind of realized that there aren't really many people in the world that do it i mean there's i know of one other guy that does really nice work in the states um there's one guy in italy as well but he's not super i mean the other two they're not they're not super big so we're probably like maybe the biggest brand that does it but there are two guys that do very nice work as well um yeah one in the states one in italy um but that's about it really i mean there are a couple of guys that try or that do like just one color and stuff which is great which is fine but you know we do i mean pretty much everything we can um and now as well actually doing I've been using this time as well the last couple of weeks to um, to fine tune kind of some techniques and trying out some new stuff as well, uh, which is cool. Um, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks you're going to see some new new kind of options, I guess, for uh, for the racket painting. We're trying to um, yeah, we've been trying to we've been working with some hydro dipping as well, which is cool. So it means you can get some like crazy patterns and prints and stuff going on the rackets. You can get you know like full carbon fiber effect you can get uh, all kinds of crazy stuff so we've kind of just been playing around with that a little bit i've been yeah so uh so yeah we're always i mean we're still learning like anything you know we're always trying to get better so um yeah even after you know like now three probably about three years record three and a half years four years record painting you know still trying to improve all the time and get and get better i mean I, i've used you a, a few times so i know that you're really good and i'm really happy with the rackets i've painted and um, and if you're interested in getting your racket painted, you can check out unstrongcustoms.com, right? That's the way to get in touch if you have any requests. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can uh, go to our website. You can find us obviously on Instagram, unstrongcustoms. 
uh, and then send us an email. The best thing is send us an email. The email address is info at unstruckcustoms.com um, and then we can get back to you from there because, uh, yeah, I try and keep everything organized because, we, I mean, we get some requests, obviously a lot of requests through Instagram and stuff, but, but I, I always ask people to send me an email um, because otherwise I, I kind of lose track of everything that's going on. So, um, yeah, if you are interested, don't, yeah, feel free, send us an email. Uh, we'll get back to you. Obviously, racket painting at the moment is a little bit on pause because um, obviously with everything that's going on, it means uh, I can't really, like, I can't get to the workshop really. Uh, can't do very much. And even if I could, I wouldn't be able to get many of the supplies that I needed anyway. So at the moment, I'm pretty much uh, racket painting is kind of on a on a halt. Yeah. Um, so I actually I have a big backlog of rackets. I've got about I think about I don't know maybe 15 to 16 frames waiting for me when this uh, when this um, quarantine is over so wow. that's why I'm uh, yeah I'm using these these couple of weeks to kind of take it easy because I think I'll be putting in some long hours as soon as um, as soon as we're kind of more free to move around so yeah I've got yeah I've got really a lot of rackets going <laughs> waiting for me uh, I've got a couple of uh, frames going to, to to a guy in Holland that I've done some rackets for before they're gonna look really cool um, they're gonna be like a dark blue metallic with a gold pinstripe around the frame uh, I think they're gonna look really cool I've got some frames uh, painting for some friends at head as well uh, I'm gonna try and emulate um, some skis because obviously head do skis as well and they have some um, so I'm going to try and do that. Uh, so kind of try and make a racket look like a ski, which is going to be a challenge, but that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, and a couple of other fun, fun. And then I'll, I mean, obviously, because I'm like, I'm trying to come up with new stuff. I also need to find time to, to, to test the kind of the ideas that I have. And, um, and actually one thing that we're going to hopefully start doing uh, soon as well, um, probably kind of from June onwards, is that actually we're going to be uh, kind of pre-designing rackets and, and then um, offering them up to our customers, to our clients. Meaning that you know that I'll come up with with designs and then I'll kind of like do them. I'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll paint. I'll, I'll take a pair of blades or a pair of radicals and then I'll do a design and then kind of leave them 80% done, 90% done, and then offer them you know to, to clients. You know they can say, hey, I really like that design. Whenever I post photos of, of frames that we've done, you know people always, I mean nearly always, like super positive about them. Be like, oh, they look awesome. Can we get them? This and that. So actually. This way I can, you know, be like, hey, this is a pair of frames. You can, you know, still add your name to them or add a logo to them, but this is a design and we'll customize them for you and ship them out to you, you know? So, and it also kind of speeds up the process. But because obviously we understand that like the racket painting takes time, you know, there's no real kind of way to rush it because obviously if we rush it and like anything, the kind of the quality is not as good. So we, um, like if you send us a racket, it'll take us about 10 to 12 days to, to get it done. Um, because obviously each layer needs to kind of to harden, to dry, and um, yeah, it's, it's a time-consuming process, but obviously it, that's why it's custom. You know, it says you'll end up with a racket that's one of a kind or two of a kind if you buy two. But yeah, it's, it's something different no one else will have, so that, you know, you kind of have to, sometimes you have to wait for these things. Yeah, and it's really, I mean, on trend, I think a lot of people, whether, you know, whatever industry wants kind of custom things. I mean, it's once become very popular to get kind of your, your own custom and, and Pay a little bit more to get your unique design on a product so i think it's it's very timely and um and it's it's uh you do a really great job at it um, and also besides the painting you have um something that i think a lot of tennis nerds would be interested in it's a 3d printed palette system for uh, specific grip shapes and sizes uh, so how, how does that work and, and how long have you worked on that uh, yeah so that so this idea came about actually at we were at um, a stringers uh, symposium a couple of years ago, and they were doing a presentation and a talk on, um, on grip molding, uh, which is you know when you res you remove the the pallet or the or the molded grip that the racket comes with, and then you mold on your own shape or size, which is great, and it's been done for ages, um, and a lot of pros use the use it and stuff. But I was I was sitting there and I was thinking it's got to be an easier way or like a more modern way because it's like. It's super time consuming, it's difficult. You know, like if, for example, in a mole, if you off, if you don't set the, the, the hairpin of the racket, so the, the metal part of the racket perfectly center and even, then it's gonna, you know, you're gonna come out with a wonky mold, you know, you can have diff you can have problems in the mold if you haven't mixed it right, whatever. So, so I was sitting there and I was like, it's gotta be an easier way. So I was like, 
maybe can't we just 3D print these? You know, like everything, they're 3D printing everything these days, so like, why not? So it, yeah, so it kind of started from there and then it's actually been, we've been about a year now, year and a half in, in testing and prototyping because it actually turned out that it was more difficult than, uh, than I first thought it might be, mainly because of the weight issue. Um, if there wasn't a weight problem, then I could do it, we could do it super easy, but obviously because of the weight, we had to find the right material, the right, the right way of 3D printing the pallets. But now we have it down and we've pretty much completed our catalog of, um, of pallets. So it basically means that you can take any racket you want um, and you can order pallets in different shapes. So you could be playing with a pure drive, contact us or order from us, uh, you know, like two uh, TK82 pallets for your pure drive. For example, you want them in grip size three, perfect. So then either obviously you can send us the records, we'll install them for you, or you can just order the pallets from us, we'll send them to you, you can install them, or you can ask, you know, your, your stringer, customizer to install them for you. They're pretty, I mean, they're, they're as simple as installing, um, you know, pallets on head rackets. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. And we you know, we send you a little guide on how to how to install them. Yeah, and it, I mean, it just opens up the, the possibilities, you know, for, for not just for pro players, but also for, for club players, you know, like many many people have been playing with one racket or one brand for a long time, and then they try, you know, their friend's Wilson blade, but, you know, they've been using a, I don't know, Prestige their whole life, and then they pick up the blade, they're like, oh, this racket's nice, but the grip feels weird, you know, the shapes are all different between each brand, so they're like, well, you know, whereas that now you can, you know, that you don't have to, it's not something that you have to um, worry about, you can just, you know, you can, you can change up the palette and you can have no problems. It's a great idea with the 3D printing, but I can understand that these things usually have a lot more complications than you would you would think when you get the idea. Um, and, and you've done some work for pros uh, with these palettes? Yeah, we've been working uh, closely actually in the beginning, or still obviously now, uh, with Alias Bezene, the Slovenian slash British player. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's always been quite kind of particular about his grips and he likes them slacks. Small. So we came up with like, first we came up with kind of a grip size 2, then it was a grip size 1.75. He's playing with something that's like a 1.4, like a grip 1.4, something like that, like an L1.4. So it's, oh, wow. it's small. Yeah, that he likes. Um, and then what we do is we, for him, the whole, obviously the grip is that shape, but then I can't remember the shape of the grip. I think it's like something similar to a head shape, let's say. So like, like an old classic head. TK57 shape or 80, you know, TK82 shape. But then obviously, because he plays Wilson, we then, um, the last kind of two centimeters are the shape and size of a, of a Wilson L2 palette or grip, you know? So that means that the, um, that the butt cap fits on smoothly without any, you know, it doesn't move, doesn't, you know, creep. Because obviously if we had a palette that's a 1.4, you know, and then we try and put an L2, butt cap on it's going to move or if you put an L1 butt cap on it's going to stretch you know so we just um, so yeah so it just slots on without any problems which is quite cool uh, I think we posted some photos of it actually on, on our Instagram so you can, you can go and check them out um, in some more detail yeah no it's uh, very interesting because I, I know a lot of players they're very picky about especially the grip and, and many pros they have customized grips is probably the most common thing to customize on a racket because it's such a personal thing to have your own um, grip style and, and like you said when you when you switch rackets in between brands the grip can become an issue yeah exactly and uh, and obviously the difference because uh, the 3d printing i mean the, the the technique that we've been using is not like a regular 3d printing it's kind of it's basically laser cut kind of uh, and it means we print i think to 0.01 millimeter of accuracy and the other thing is that it means that whether you print or a pallet today, or in three months, or in two years' time, it's going to be exactly the same. You know, it's not dependent. You don't have to do six, eight rackets at once. You know, if you're doing grip molding, because you know you need to mix the same mixture, make sure the ratio is exactly the same. You know, where it, you know if, if I don't know, you, mold, you mix a ratio today, and then in six months' time, like I don't know, you need to you, you're using a different brand. Is it going to come out, come out different, whatever? Whereas this is like they're always going to be exactly the same, uh, which is cool. And then. And then obviously, because everything is designed on the computer, we're able to add in more kind of details. So like, if you want a completely custom mold, you know, or a custom design, then, you know, you can get your name on it and you can add in kind of details. The kind of the most specific thing we did recently was for uh, Adrian Manorino. He wanted to have like a slight raised edge on one of the narrow sides, um, on the top narrow side. So like the bevel's kind of like, instead of being flat, it's kind of a, like a slight angle. Um, because if you know he liked that for his for when he played, especially for the forehand um, or whatever, so we were able to work with him. And it means you know we don't have to create a mold. We don't have to, you know, we can make 
we could we gave him three options straight off the bat because we could you know we could design them on the computer, come up with different options, and then print them, and he could test them all. Uh, and he said, okay, I like this one or that one or whatever. Um, and so it was a lot faster and a lot easier to kind of come up with different options. Whereas you know if you if you're going to do a mold, you have to first create a cast, you have to lock cast, uh, and then you have to make a mold, then you have to remold them. So you know we're able to kind of do kind of different stuff there are some players that like as well having the top of the grip a bit thicker so it doesn't taper in if they play with you on the backhand whatever so you know so really you have a lot of a lot more options yeah it's a it's a great idea i I must say and um you before we went on um, recording mode we talked a bit about another product that you have you're making plans for right now can you tell us a bit about that Yes, I'm, I'm excited to, to announce that I've been working on a project these past couple of weeks. Well, it's been in the pipeline for a while, um, but it's been one of those things that take takes time to, to put together. And now, obviously, with the time at home, I've been able to really get it kind of nearly finalized. Um, we're actually we're working on um, on a complete stringing course, uh, online stringing course, which personally I'm really excited for because I think it can help a lot of a lot of people, a lot of players, a lot of stringers. Um, it's going to be a complete online course that will pretty much take someone that has never strung a racket or never even held a racket and by the end of it they'll be stringing to like a, a very good solid um, level um, and obviously with stringing it comes you know it, it's down to uh, consistency and and experience you know and, and obviously practice like anything you're gonna have to string a lot of rackets but you're gonna learn all the foundations um, I've pretty much tried to put my 15 years of experience into this course so it'll teach you everything from weaving techniques to learning about strings tensions which what means what you're going to learn different knots you'll learn just how to kind of make sure that your string is consistent every single time you know to make sure the racket is as tight as it possibly can be also then we're going to do you know there'll be a couple of different packages you know so you'll have a complete package which will have absolutely everything in there then you'll have for example a slightly more cost efficient option which is going to be a bit more of a let's say a basic package that that you know for someone that just wants to learn to string and then kind of get on with it themselves you know they'll learn all the basics um, and there's some tips and stuff um and then there'll be like a let's say for, for guys that already know how to string uh, that have been stringing for a while that kind of just want to refine their techniques maybe learn a couple of new tips from from someone that you know like, like myself that's been able to string for kind of some of the top guys so i'll be sharing yeah, pretty much everything I know about stringing in this course, um, which is which is actually quite a lot of information I've learned over the last couple, of, you know, few weeks where I've been trying to put it all out there, kind of try and organize everything. And yeah, and I've, I think it's going to be really cool. Um, I'm I'm really excited for it. So hopefully the the idea is to launch this in May, first week of May. Obviously everything permitting with regards to the quarantine and so on. But I yeah, I'm yeah, I'm really I'm really excited for it. There's a lot of information out there for people to you know that they can see on YouTube. They can learn stuff from here there and everywhere but there's not really one course so you can say hey look if you do this course you're going to come out stringing you know pretty well um, and that, and that's kind of my my goal you know to, to give everyone the option to to learn to, to you know and, and it won't just be knowledge for myself i'm going to ask some of my friends and, and peers to to kind of chime in with with some some tips as well um, so it's really going to be like a collective of information but really a, yeah like a really in-depth course that, uh, that anyone can kind of learn and also um yeah, just take their stringing to the next level. That's a great idea. I think that uh, there's there's nothing similar out there on the market, and I know because I, I've really tried to improve my stringing over the last couple of years, and it's it's tough to find really detailed professional information. So I would definitely personally need a course like this uh, to get my stringing up to scale. But uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's great. And uh, you keep um, you keep up to date through Armstrong Customs. That's where where you will uh, be able to find out the info yeah. about the, the course. Exactly. Yeah, we'll be. Um... We're kind of getting it all together now. Finish, you know, we've got to finish all the videos and all the data. We, you know, we want to as well make because it is like it's going to be like a course, like a learning course. So we want to try and make some of it interactive as well. There will also be support. Uh, you know, if you got if people that take the course have email, like have questions for us and stuff. Obviously, we'll you know we'll, we'll help them in any way we can. The announcement for when it does get released will be on our on probably on our through our Instagram page. But soon, probably in a week or so, we'll start kind of drip feeding some information through our Instagram course, uh, through our Instagram uh, page uh, about the course. Um, so yeah, kind of just uh, keep keep checking and uh, we'll keep you guys updated. When it comes to um, your own uh, tennis playing, I mean, you're still through coaching a bit, I guess, on the side um, with, with a few players. Yeah, I'm still coaching a little bit. Just, uh, I mean, obviously I, I love tennis, so I try and I still like to be on court and I still play a little bit when I can uh, with some of, I still have a few friends that are still you know playing on tour so I uh, 
you know, and also just to keep my my health up and stuff. I'm still playing, um, and so yeah, sometimes I'm lucky enough to to get to hit with some of the pros. So you know, I want to stay in shape and, and keep you know keep playing. But yeah, I'm still coaching. Um, I think it's also like it's nice to combine it with the with the customizing and the stringing. Plus, I mean, it gives us like. Or at least me, uh, like a, you know, like a different perspective as well to help players, you know, because obviously they can they can come to me with like, with certain you know feelings about rackets or strings, and it's something that I can kind of let's say relate to a little bit. So it kind of gives me a you know chance to help them a little bit further. Something that a lot of tennis nerds will wonder is is what racket you use yourself. Do you have one that you you use, or you're you're playing around uh, with different ones? Yeah, to be honest, I, I strangely I've not ever been that picky. I mean, I've always like played with when I was playing. I was using the H22 from Wilson, and I still like to hit with it. And obviously, I had them customized, like I customized them myself and everything. But these days, I'm happy just to hit with anything really. I mean, I really like lately. I really like the Gravity Pro from Head. I think it's really like a, it's a super frame. And I think if I was to play now, and I had, to, you know, and I had to use a, a you know, like a, a normal racket, stock racket, that that would be the frame that I would use. I really like it a lot. I think that, yeah, it feels great. And I, yeah, so that's kind of the one that I'm using the most. Um, and also the new Prestige Mid Mid Plus is really nice as well. I think it's, you know, the slightly larger head has been has been really good. So yeah, they're kind of my two kind of go-to frames. What else do I hit with you sometimes? I mean, I have the the Wilson Blade as well. I, I like as well. Um, actually, I always used to like that as well because it was kind of similar ish to my to the h22 when i used to play um just a little bit kind of softer i guess but to be honest these days i'm just happy to hit i'd hit with a frying pan if i had to yeah i'm just happy to play do you have any uh, any go-to strings that you're using or you're you're liking more than others yeah i mean when i was playing that unfortunately i couldn't afford it but whenever i could was uh, like i you know i, I tried to use gut uh and 4g um and i was using 4g when i was playing mainly um i really like like i like a solid way that it feels on the strings like it really holds the ball really nicely personally i prefer it to alu power um but just personal preference i guess more recently i've started using the um lynx tour obviously which was experimental from from head uh i think it's it's yeah it's one of the nicest strings to come out in a long time uh, from not just from head but from any brand because it just uh, yeah kind of it's it's a string that a lot of people can use it's you know it, it's firm it holds the ball well it's not too stiff it's uh, it's really a nice balance so that's kind of the that's the string i have in all the rackets that i play with at the moment so um, yeah and i think the color's cool it's something a bit different so i think they did a really nice job because otherwise it's not been you know that many strings come out recently that have you know been super exciting i mean i know bubble Act came out with their rpm power but i'm not a massive fan of it it reminds me of an older string especially when you string it um it, i don't know if you've heard it being strung but it reminds me very much of pro hurricane i mean the string is nice but it's not my not my favorite thing in the world i think rpm blast the normal one is, is nicer to be honest than uh, but yeah, so that's kind of that's what I go to at the moment. And yeah, if, if ever I'm hitting with any of the pros and I have have some extra gut lying around, I always string a hybrid gut combo. Yeah, that's one of the most um, most popular setups among the pros still. I yeah, it is. Um, but I mean, I still fit the obviously amongst the top guys, it is. Um, however, sadly, it is still super expensive. So even if you're outside the top kind of 30, 40 players in the world, like not really able, you don't have a contract that will give. You know that might give you free gut or you are not able to really afford it because i mean yeah so a lot of players are still using full hybrid and i think you're gonna soon you're gonna see because with the development in hybrid strings you're gonna start seeing more uh, sorry in mon- monofilament strings you're gonna start seeing hybrid monofilament setups uh, yeah. because they've you know like they've uh, i know that you know a lot of the companies been working on coming out with softer polys just so they've been able to kind of alter a lot the the properties of the strings lately which is quite exciting so i think you're going to start seeing kind of like a lot more you know one poly in the mains and another poly in the crosses which i think is good i mean it's always fun when things are changing i guess so um i think that's kind of going to be the next kind of the next thing that that's going to be a trend on tour do you see any trends in general when it comes to tensions? Are they going down, like many say, or or do you think that's they're still around that kind of medium twenty five yeah, kilo range? Yeah, to be honest, people. Yeah, like I mean, I'm sure you get the question a lot. Well, we, uh, me too, or us too. We get, you know, what tension do you use? What's the best tension for this and that? And to be honest, there is there is absolutely no rule. Uh, if you, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't go too extreme on either way. 
on either side but there is no there is no rule like if you like it a little bit tighter go a little bit tighter if you like it looser go a little bit looser if this i mean for example uh, you know like i mentioned earlier i think it was um as a last video that's using kind of like 16 17 18 kilos and then uh, no lack is stringing at 28 and a half kilos so you really you really see everything and then you have someone like rafa who strings the same tension regardless of where he plays what surface what you know what day nothing he strings the same t- tension 25 and a half kilos so there, there's no there's no right or wrong um, just uh, play around with it don't go too extreme i think especially take uh, what people need to take into account of is the racket that they're using and then deciding what tension would be good from there you know like obviously if you're using a bubble at pure drive for example and then you're stringing your 16 kilos it's probably going the wrong direction. Same if you're using, you know, like a prestige mid and then you're stringing at 28 kilos as well, you're going in the wrong direction. So try and have, you know, if you're playing with a powerful racket, maybe string a little bit tighter. If you're playing with a more control racket, try stringing a little bit looser and seeing how that goes. So otherwise you end up going a bit too crazy, which, you know, which you don't want. Yeah, I completely agree. Besides um, talking about rackets and strings, you also have a pretty nice collection of pro player rackets yourself that I've been, been um, fortunate enough to to have a look at up close. Um, so what's what's uh, in your current bank of, of pro rackets? Yeah, the last couple of years, obviously working with and different players and hitting with different players, I've been able to um, to collect some cool frames. Um, and they're just, to be honest, they're just for person, like just to have in the office. Um, I think, you know, then like, I guess, little parts of history. Um, so um, yeah, so I've been, you know, just trying to, Grab a collection of frames, which is cool. So I have, obviously, I have Novak frames. I have a couple of his. Most recently, I've got one of his black and gold ones, which is really cool. Um, so that's kind of like my my top piece. Um, and that's, you know, I, as well, we get a lot of requests. Oh, do you sell them? No, we don't. Obviously, we don't sell any rackets. Don't really do any. I just keep them for my um, for myself. So I've got his racket. I've got a frame from Andy Murray, which is cool. I've got the Vrinka frame so as well, which is pretty exciting. Um, I kind of just try and collect the frames of the players that I like, <laughs> to be honest, you know, that I'm fans of. I've got a racket from Juan Martin del Potro. That's quite nice. Really cool frame, actually, uh, in that, like, uh, what was it called? The FST Burn? Yeah, the, the FST Burn yeah. paint job, yeah. Yeah, and then it's got his uh, his name in the throat in the Argentinian flag with, like, colours, which is pretty cool got a frame from Carlos Moya one of his soft drives which is which is really cool one of his personal frames which is pretty pretty cool that's the sign as well which is quite quite cool nice um, yeah so he was yeah he was one of my favorite players growing up um, seeing him hit inside out forehands from anywhere in the court and then who else have I got I've got Robin Soling racket because I did have some did some frames for him and stuff so I asked if he would you know he's got that crazy grip mold I um, don't know if you guys have seen it but it's pretty crazy it's huge the flare on the back cap is massive so I've uh, got one of his personal frames which is quite nice um, I'm trying to think if I've missed anyone out obviously oh, I've got a Rafa frame more recently as well that was my kind of most recent uh, acquisition so yeah so that was cool and uh, yeah and you need to get a Federer um, one now that's that's what's yeah, missing that's, kind of. that's the most difficult one that's, I don't know I don't know how or where I'm going to get one from but yeah that's that's a dream I was lucky enough to hit with him once but that wasn't enough to <laughs> to, to get me a frame unfortunately so I'm going to oh you hit yeah, you, you hit, we hit with Fed yeah I was lucky enough to hit with him once at Wimby which was which was cool um, oh that's great yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, yeah that was that was pretty exciting on, the, on one of the stadium courts as well we hit on stadium court 3 at Wimby which was cool but yeah trying to get one of his rackets I actually want if I was to try and find one I'd try like I'd like to get one of his old frames you know one of the the, um, the 90 first half 90s um, yeah. just because you know they're a little bit more I guess historic um, than you know than the new frames so um, but yeah I don't know maybe one day we'll see well, that's great to hear and um, so do you have anything you want to add like any um, you know other products that you're launching or any additions on the business side of things or um, anything else you'd like to add I get, no, I think I cover everything. To be honest, I'm obviously with the racket painting and the customizing, the grip palettes, the now the course. I think you know we've got quite a few things going on. Um, I also have a few kind of like personal projects that I'm getting on with that aren't tennis related as well. So like things are pretty busy, which is good. Um, just you know getting ready for this quarantine to pass so we can get back out on the court. And uh, yeah, that's it. And um, actually, well, if you um, if you follow us at the moment, obviously with the time that we've got, I'm trying to come up with like small little videos. Um, to kind of share on our on our Instagram page, you know, with the Instagram TV. Um, so if any of your followers kind of have any like 
recommendations or any requests for like how do you do this how do you do that you know like on a, I don't know can be really anything right I mean as long as it's not question about pro player specs because we don't share them generally so you know don't ask us what's the way what rackets this what you know <laughs> but if it's like yeah because obviously that you know we get a load of those questions which is fine I understand it but like we just we're happy to share string tensions and stuff but just when it comes down to specs we keep them just unless the players told us yeah you can tell people that's not a problem then we uh, we just we keep them quiet just out of you know out of respect really so but apart from that if you know if any of your followers have questions on I don't know how do you do this not how do you grip this racket this way or that or you know and then we'll try and do a video on it so yes yeah, so, yeah if if, uh, if you if you know any of our followers you can either send us a message or send you a message and uh, we'll try and you know get some different kind of cool content going as you saw I also did a video on stringing Novak's racket and then I also did one on how you put um, an overgrip on that we do for some of our players like without any overlaps so it works as like an intermediate grip so you have obviously your leather grip or your base grip and then we add one one overgrip super thin uh, without any overlaps um, and then you would uh, put you know normal over grip on top of that um, and then with I've had a couple of requests to do like a leather grip installation video so I'm going to try and do that this week um, when I get in the office um, I'll try and sneak to the office and put you know do a video of um, of how you how we install leather grip because I think a lot of people can ask us where do you start how do you do it because obviously leather grips are a bit of a pain to be honest yeah. they're, they're hard work as well uh, we um, I think it was uh, Nate Ferguson from P1 that said, if your hands don't cramp after installing the leather grip, then you're not doing it right. Yeah, um, I know that. I agree with that. Yeah. So, like, if we have sometimes, you know, I have six frames to do, I have to do, like, you know, I'll put two leather grips on in the morning, two in the afternoon, and two in the evening, or two the next day. Because if I try and do all of them at the same time, by the time I get to the fourth, fifth, sixth racket, I'm like, my hands are done. So, yeah, so I'm going to try and do a video for that. Um, but yeah, if, so if any of your followers have any questions, I know it can be anything random, you know, to a specific, but as long as it's, you know, it's obviously A, tennis related and B, not about uh, can you show us the weight of Novak's racket or whatever, then do uh, my very best to make a short video about it. Great. Yeah, that's I... if, you have, if you have any requests, I'll take any requests directly from you. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think uh, I'm really looking forward to the stringing course myself. That's, uh, that's something I, I really want to get my hands deeper into um, for my own testing purposes yeah. and stuff. So yeah, I think that's, yeah, I that's think something I'm looking do, forward to. Um, yeah, we'll do. I mean, obviously when we launch it, we'll, uh, we'll kind of we'll be offering up some, you know, some early birds packages and stuff. And then maybe we can do like a giveaway as well for your Yeah, followers. that would be great. That would be great. I think a lot of people would do. And then, you know, the winner gets a free, free course. Yeah, it would be awesome. I think a lot of people, everyone like loves giveaways. So I think that would be a good, good yeah. idea. <laughs> me, myself included. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks a lot, Nicky, for taking the time to talk to me in these strange times. And I hope you you stay safe and uh, keep working on your tennis uh, content and people can follow you on Unstrung Customs and unstrungcustoms.com. Yeah. yeah, my pleasure. It's been, it's been fun. It's been, it's been good. It's nice to you know, have some connection with some other people as well. It's, been, it's, you know, it's important to, to speak to friends, family, colleagues, you know, especially in these times. So, you know, it's been great. Thanks, man. Take care. Nice one. Yeah, take care. Ciao, ciao. Bye. See you later. Bye, bye, bye.